All right. We're back. Road to Paris, number five. We got four producers in the house today. We got Triborn's actually behind the camera back from Brazil. Benvindo. We got the pod mama. She's hanging out. She built this whole studio. Then we got producer D, and we have our newest producer coming in the house. Get in there. Little Mr. Austin Zahn Mawerder. He is absolutely irate to be here. Oh, hey, buddy. There he is. Austin Zahn. <laughs> I don't know how long he's actually going to be on camera and on his podcast with me for because he's hungry. When he's hungry, the boy gets hangrier than daddy, which is saying something. However, Austin is covering up my TKN t-shirt, rocking TKN for the second straight road to Paris because they just got their gold medal in the Uberlandia Elite 16. Looked phenomenal doing it. They got swept by Anna Patricia and Duda in their first one. And then they just came back five straight sweeps, beat Betsy Flint and Julia Scholes to break pool, swept Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes in the semifinals, and looked phenomenal doing so. Hadn't beat them in the first four times trying. Fifth time was the charm. It's the best I've seen Kristen and Taryn look. First gold medal in Elite 16, second gold medal of the year, and now they are number two in the Olympic rankings for the women behind the one and only Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes. They have now won six of nine tournaments. Got some big blue eyes here from Austin's on, and they were uh, they were due to finally lose one. You know they had lost a set twenty one ten to Kristen and Taryn in New Orleans. Then they lost a set twenty one to eight in the semifinals to Betsy Flint and Julia Scholes in New Orleans. So they were due to actually have one clunker of a match. They had a clunker in the semifinals against Kristen and Taryn, and then they got smacked pretty good by Anna Patricia and Duda for bronze. But the good sign for Kelly and Sarah is that that's their floor. A fourth place in an Elite 16 is as bad as they've been this season, which is a remarkable sign. So a one-two punch at the top of the women's Olympic standings. And while this isn't necessarily relevant to the Olympics, got to give a shout-out to David Schweiner and Andre Perisic. They're not going to have any problem qualifying for the Olympic Games in Paris, but huge win for them. It's their first gold medal in Uberlandia. Uh, they hadn't won one since the Itapema four-star in 2021, they had been over six in gold medal matches, and they had lost eight straight to Anders Moll and Christian Sorum. They'd played them nine times. Their 10th time was in Uberlandia, and they had gone to three, six of those nine times. Went to three in the 10th, ended up going down 4-1, coming back winning 15-12. Stoked for David Schweiner. They finally got their gold medal. It seemed long, long awaited for the Czechs. So stoked for them. They are going to be the home team and the favorites in Ostrava at the end of May. So the next road to Paris will come after that one. So we'll see if they can go back to back. They've made two straight finals in Ostrava, lost both of them. They lost to Brower and Musin 15-13 two years ago, and then they lost to Anders and Christian in the third set last year. So we'll see if they can go back to back jacks. Going to stick with the women's headlines for a bit. Uh, the Swiss women now have three very competitive teams. They had three teams in the main draw of Uberlandia. Esme Bobner and Zoe Verge Dupre, they finished off a really successful trip in Brazil. They took a fourth in Itapema, took a fifth in Sacarima. Then they qualified for the main draw in Uberlandia, ended up taking a 13th. But the fact that they made the main draw after a really long month in Brazil was tremendous. And they actually started their main draw with a rematch with Big Sis, Anouk Verge Dupre, and Joanna Mader. Finally learned how to pronounce her new name was Joanna Heidrich, married into Joanna Mater. Uh, they lost that one 21-15, 21-15. So a big welcome back to the Beach Pro Tour for Joanna and Anouk. They were the Olympic bronze medalists in 2021, just the second European team to win a medal in the Olympic Games in 2021. Took 10 months off after Joanna had a pretty brutal shoulder injury in the World Championships back in Rome. That was in June. Ten months later, one met one wedding later, they're finally back on the Beach Pro Tour, and they looked fantastic. I expected them to be a little bit nervy, a little bit rusty. They came out, swept Zoe and Esme, swept Katya Stam, and Raisa Schoon ended up making the quarterfinals, beat Chen Shu and Xin Yi Sha, fantastic team out of China. Then they took a fifth, looked a little bit up and down uh, on the side out from Joanna, but that's very much to be expected. Glad to see her healthy again. Glad to see them back on the Beach Pro Tour. It's better with them in it. It's also better with their country women, Nina Brunner and Tanya Huberly. They also took a fifth, lost a white-knuckler thriller in the quarters to Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes, won that first set 21-15, 
ended up losing in three, 16, 14. This is good mental practice dealing with squirmy baby and remembering all these stats off the top of my head. But uh, so Switzerland takes two fifths, had a third team in the main draw. And that's going to be a fun race to watch to see if Zoe, Verge Dupre, and Esme Bobner, if they can contend with Joanna and Anouk. And uh, I'll have my eyes on that one. I didn't expect it to be that tight of a race, honestly, between Switzerland. But Zoe and Esme are just playing that good right now. Now, as for the last headliner for the women, the Germans, Carla Borger and Sandra Itlinger. It's been kind of an off year for the Germans. We've only seen their top teams, Tinya Tillman and Svenja Mueller. They've only played one event. They skipped out on Uberlandia. I'm not totally sure why, but they are back on the entry list for Ostrava in a month at the end of May. But Carla Borger and Sandra Itlinger ended up qualifying, beat Italians Valentina Gattardi and Marta Menegatti, the Sakurima champs, one of the most promising up-and-coming teams on the Beach Pro Tour. And they won 17-15 in the third. <laughs> and our producer, Snorton, he's crying. So I'm going to pass him off to producer D. He just, he needs some boobs in his life. <laughs> and so it's the, the qualification, the main draw in Uberlandia for them was huge because Julia Sood and Isabel Schneider have continued struggling. They took a 19th in Soccer Rima, didn't qualify, first round qualifier loss in Uberlandia. And so it was a big jump for Borger and Itlinger, who are now the number one team in the Olympic ranks for Germany. So a big jump for them. As for the main headliners for the men, I already touched on Perisic and Schweiner. Not going to talk a whole lot about. Teams like Anders and Christian, they're going to make the Olympics. Paris at Schweiner, they're going to make the Olympics. Brower Musen, all those guys, pretty much assured spots in Paris. But Matthew Emmers and Steven Vandeveld, massive tournament, big run in Brazil. They took a ninth in Itapema, fifth in Sakurima, and then they took a fourth, looked tremendous. At the beginning of the year, Matthew Emmers was the odd guy out for the Netherlands. So the Netherlands Federation has funding for four teams. Those four teams at the beginning of the year was Alex Brower, Robert Musen, Stefan Bormans, York de Groot, Steven Vandeveld, and Christian Varenhorst, and Ruben Peninga and Leon Luini, also known as Linguini and Spaghetti, who try, <laughs> who try knocked out of the quali, my guy. Um, but Emmers was the last guy out. He had been playing with Bormans, was sort of the best injury fill ever, and then Bormans went back to de Groot. So Emmers wasn't really supposed to play this year. Christian Varenhorst gets hurt again. Steven Vandeveld subs him in, and now they are right in the thick of it, fully contending with Bormans and De Groot for sort of that second Dutch spot, and really contending with Brouwer and Musen as well. Neither Dutch team really separating themselves. Second men's headliners, my guys, Tri Born, producer Tri today, him and Kame Shock, big run in Uberlandia, swept. Leon Luini, Ruben Peninga in the first round swept Sam Schachter and Dan Deering. Incredible, crazy second set. Classic try and came down 16-11 in the second set and ended up winning 21-19. Ridiculous rallies. Ended up beating Brower Musen. Ended up squeaking out of pool play by a point or two to beat Pedro and Guto and then took advantage. Beat George and Andre in a tremendous match. Big upset over a Brazilian team that had won four straight gold medals in Brazil. And then they ended up finishing fifth. Try was gassed by that quarterfinal match against Poland. Uh, he had been split blocking with Trevor Crabbe and really didn't get served a whole lot the last couple of years. And so now he's getting served pretty much every single ball, at least he did in Brazil, and jump serving and running up and blocking. Finished the tournament third in blocks of 28, 12 behind Perisic or Schweiner, who ended up leading the tournament with 40. And so he was just out of legs. Really good showing from Chai and Kame, who are now the number one team in the United States in the Olympic rankings, number 12 overall. At the moment, they're a couple spots ahead of Theo Bruner and Trevor Crabb. The last men's headliners, uh, it's just a weird tournament for the Italians. So Adrian Carambula and Alex Rangieri had to forfeit due to an injury to Rangieri. I'm not sure what sickness. the extent of the injury. So sickness, Tri says in the background. So Rangieri got sick. Um, so he should be fine to go by Ostrava, but Sam Kotafava and Paolo Nikolai, weird tournament. They took a ninth, which on paper isn't a terrible result, but they went one and three. So not their best showing. And then Daniele Lupo and Enrico Rossi, they lost in the first round of the qualifier, got upset by Sam Schachter and Dan Deering. So Lupo and Rossi are kind of on that struggle bus area right now. And as for the struggle bus, this is for some reason become everyone's favorite section of this little road to Paris show. 
the Taylors, Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander, they are firmly on the struggle bus. It's not that they're playing bad. They're just not winning. They played pretty well in Soccer Rima, ended up losing a, a tough match to Switzerland in the last round of the qualifier, didn't qualify, didn't even play bad in Itapema, lost a barn burner to Vandeveld and Immers, ended up going, taking a 17th there and then they lost in the first round of the qualifier in a good match to Evandro and Arthur. So Taylor Crab has now dropped off his fifth place in Dubai and his third place in Dubai. And so they, their entry points are way down. So they have a long road to get back into the main draw. The way they're playing, I think they'll be fine. But for now, they're just not quite winning. Uh, Luini Peninga, they came in the that kind of third, fourth ranked Dutch team. They've had a tough straight. They've lost six straight matches, had qualifier losses in Tepic, Itapema, and Uberlandia. Tough run for them. Betsy Flint and Julia Scholes, they're now 0 for 6 in Elite 16 matches. Doing great domestically. Took a second in AVP Miami, took a third in AVP New Orleans. Just haven't quite put it all together on the world tour just yet. Haley Harvard and Kelly Kalinske, same thing. They, they had their chances. They took a ninth in Itapema. Could have had a big fifth, took a ninth in Sakurima, could have had a big fifth, and then they lost in the first round of qualifier in both Tepic and Uberlandia. So both Elite 16s not quite going their way. And Julia Sud and Isabel Schneider of Germany. I have them making the Olympics. Border and Itlinger are looking a little bit better. They took a 19th in Sakurima. They took a 21st in Uberlandia, and they have lost five straight matches. So not the best run for them. Now that is pretty much the entire update for this one the biggest thing upcoming for the united states there's a world championship norseka qualifier coming up just south of the manhattan beach pier on may 9th the winner of that will go to the dominican i believe and then all you have to do is make the semifinals in that norseka and you punch your ticket to the world championships so again the race within the race of this olympic race is the race to get to world championships you get to world championships and you have a hot weekend doesn't matter how far down the Olympic race you are, you are right back in it. So world champs has a country quota of four teams per country. And you need to get into that world champs to have a shot at the Olympics. So our women, we're probably going to be having at least four, five, six teams potentially qualify for world champs. Only four can go in. And so for our women, that's going to be an important qualifier. For our men, that is a critical qualifier because we're not going to have four teams get in on points. So Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander, that's how they punched their ticket to Rome last year. We're going to see who wins on May 9th in Manhattan Beach. So that's all for now. Just a quick update. Just a post to Uberlandia Elite 16 update. Glad you could meet our second producer in the house. And I will catch you guys after Ostrava in June. Shoot.